This conference will now be recorded. Hello, good morning, guys. This is Mahesh Kumar once again, and today we are just going to discuss about the database part. So, in the previous classes, we have a uh, study about all the you know what uh, the monitoring sort of things, and we also study about uh, the EC2 instances and monitoring uh, things and uh, so many things. So, if you can just subscribe my channel and my YouTube uh, videos are available. So uh, today uh, we are just going to discuss about the last topic of uh, databases, right? And tomorrow we will just doing some practical sort of things of all the uh, database sort of things. So let's get started. So Amazon have different different uh, databases are available. Okay. So uh, we are just talking about uh, the different different type of database of AWS and well, how can we use it use it effectively and what type of uh, databases and uh, the classification of databases and uh, the uh, where what is where what are the case scenarios where we, where we can use this uh, uh, databases so databases offering aws basically is rds or the relational databases services okay and the second type of the database of non relational databases services right so first of all you have to understand which type of data center uh, data, database you require so the RDS or the relational database services is all OLTP. So it is the the category of the uh, the relational databases of RDS, uh, basically SQL sort of data databases, the Oracle databases, MySQL databases, PostgreSQL databases, and Aurora and MariaDB. These are the some relational databases you can just going to create into this uh, <clears throat> AWS. So these are some relation, relations. These are the one uh, identity and the second identity. These are the relations, relation between the each other. Suppose uh, you have one identity of a, a manager, a, a user, and user name and user age. This is type of relation databases. What I also sort of means. Suppose there's a employee in the uh, one user in the company, and there's a specific name of the users, and what is the employee ID of the user. So these are the relations between the two things, right? non relation database services are DynamoDB, so collection rather than uh, tables. So it is the collection of sort of things and uh, not using for tables, document rather than rows. So it is there for the document sort of things, key value pair rather than fields. And the um, another type of, uh, you know, what uh, AWS database is basically the Redshift to Redshift is basically data warehousing or business intelligence using tools like Oracle, Hyperion, Wait a second, Hyperion or SAP uh, new Weaver or Lab, right? So we have just talking about all sort of things in what different different sort of databases into this. Mm. So you just came to know that this is the two uh, type of databases we just uh, into the AWS relation databases on the non relation database. And the main uh, thing is about this, these are some relation databases of RDA sort of things, and this is the DynamoDB. It's another type of uh, databases. So, okay. And the, the red shift is basically data warehousing of okay and providing some business intelligence using tools like Oracle, right? Uh, Hyperion and Swap uh, Viewer. So this is Informatica this is providing providing you some sort of you know what uh, um, information about your databases. Okay, suppose you have a, a multiple uh, you know what um, you know what um, we can say that. Uh, um, malls are available, right? Different different mall. You, if you are a purchasing company or you you are you, uh, you are in into the you know what marketing sort of things, and you are just providing different different malls of of of, of you know what of opening in, into the different different city, right? And then how much sales is going on, and what is it, you know what um, you know, which things is just a high high selling sort of things, and which is you know what we have to sell, and this sort of you know what idea, you know what business intelligence tools it is providing to you informations. Sort of things. So the red shift is basically providing to, providing you to them information about the uh, your business, what the business updates is all about, right? So this is using the Oracle Hyper uh, Hyper on SAP network all of tools is basically into this AWS. So this is the uh, uh, we can say that uh, uh, the, it is you know what database service and this is a second a non relational database. So DynamoDB we are using it and this we are RDS we are using it. Okay, and so that shift in another, another part of the story is all about. Okay, so um, we will have to just uh, keep keep eye on this. Uh, is uh, some of some more tools in, into this AWS? So Elastic Cache in in, in this uh, uh, we have to study in, in this. 
in memory cache in the cloud for improved application performance so the, so it is you know what improved um, uh, application performance we can just uh, going to create some elastic cache in, in the memory sort of things and then we can use it uh, as an application performance sort of things so what what is inside this memcached and radius these are the these are the two uh, basically the features we can use for the you know what uh, electric el elastic cache Sort of things like memory sort of caching uh, sort of thing so that it can be you know what improved of application performance same time and database migration service or dms is also we can just use it for transformations compared compression and parallel processing so see these are the you know what some uh, more features are available into the aws or the database migration sort of service dms and uh, transformation compression and parallel processing we can do it encryption at rest of supported for mysql oracle MySQL Server, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB automation, automated backups and read uh, replicas and snapshots are also encrypted once encryption is on. So uh, we have another option is available into the AWS. Is basically we can go for the encryption of uh, the the data, okay, database, and the, the database may be uh, you know what MySQL sort of things and uh, whether the tables and rows are available and the, you know what uh, on an Oracle sort of databases, the SQL Server databases and PostgreSQL and MariaDB. So we can just what we can do it basically we have to go for the backup of the database okay we can create replicas same time and we can also create some snapshots okay and we can do all sort of things on the encryption is on okay encryption done through the aws key management service so they this is the only one key we can kms we can just create, create some KM, kms keys and we can just encrypt the database part encrypting an existing uh, database instance is not supported okay so encryption of a data, existing database instance is not supported accomplished through migrations so we can just going to have some first of all migration and then we can just you know what uh, um, encrypt the OU database but your existing database instance is not have to support it we have to just create some migration sort of things regarding that so these are these are the some you know what uh, the uh, some more features about this AWS database offering is about Elastic Cache, MemCached. That is this feature. You will you will see that this you can easily understand this MemCached, and that is basically two uh, features about, uh, are talking about some Elastic Cache sort of things, and then this is the application performance sort of things, and database migration service is DMS is transformation compression sort of things, and then you can just you know what encrypt of of your all your, your different different type of databases, and we can also create some replicas and also some uh, read, uh, the replicas create we can also create some that uh, snapshots and we can encryption can be open okay it we can be on and the aws key management service also we can use it you know what to encrypt your data okay and if you if your existing database is not supported the encryption but we have to accomplish some migration sort of things then it will be in encrypted same sort of things right so this is about some offerings right so what is the advantage of uh, in, um, using the database services? This is another main question is all about. So we will have to take a look. Upgrades, backups, and fa uh, and failover are provided as service. So we have can we can go into this different different features are available into the AWS and in the in the physical environment. What we are going to do it? We are doing some upgrades, okay, and uh, some of uh, of your databases time to time. And we have to, we can also taking some backups and also the fail, failover are provided as service. So in this AWS, what we can go it, we can have a different different type of upgrades are, are available. We can go for the backups and we can also create some strategy about some failure failover and provided as service. Right. Second thing provides high infrastructure security. So we have different different um, features and services are available into the AWS. So we can use it as per your as per your company requirement as per corporate requirement you can easily automate so you can have you so you can have different different options are available you can just automate in your database right so first uh, so you can just create some region one database and uh, you can you can also create some region two that doesn't database same time and you then then they can be duplicate same time okay uh, as per as per your schedule you can just do some automation sort of things like that and server maintenance is also it's managed by the aws so there is a so there is no problem for with your end because suppose if you're creating some um, serverless architectures like into a database right for rds or different different sort of services so the aws is, is creating your instances and then, then then he will just taking care of your database sort of things so uh the, the matter of fact that the, the, the uh, server maintenance and or the patching sort of things right that it will be managed by the aws 
OS installation and patches are managed by the AWS. So there is no there is no worry about in your corporate environment that what type of servers or what type of configurations. We just just you just have to just configure some sort of your requirement. I require this sort of services. I require this sort of memory. I require this sort of CPU utilization, and rest of the things will be done by the AWS team their own. So there is no problem with it. there is no issues with your installation sort of things any kind of issues uh, which you are which you are facing in in our practical life in in the physical environment and uh, there is no issues with the patching so that the already already you know what provides some patching with your instances same time database software patches and installations are managed so these are the some you know what uh, databases software and patches installations managed by the AWS team and OS installation and patches managed by the AWS team server maintenance is managed by the AWS team so uh, you have you know what very very less uh, uh, you know what issues in, in into the database uh, all sort of parts you have to just decide which type of which region we have to create some database okay and second things you have to uh, decide about what type of instance what type of configurations to require in the database okay and then you have to just decide the application sort of things and then you can just uh, go for the what type of snapshots you require that that is that these are the some simple things you have to just uh, you know what uh, decide as per your strategies in the database part and then that should be things will by managed by the aws team of the physical environment sort of things so they have their manage their own uh, you know what aws team is managed all all your database uh, is to instances configuration patches and uh, database software this all sort of things is managed by the data uh, aws team so uh, this is well, less overhead over your mind about this particular particular database you have to just uh, keep your eyes on the you know, snapshot of sort of things and uh, the applications going on not going on different different type of regions the applications going on cross region uh, the applications going on okay so that sort of you know what the big ideas you can just take it take a look and you have just less overhead over the instances about or about this about the software about the open system of installation sort of things and patches sort of things which is also important security patches are need to be available same time right so that is the important cases that you can just have some different different options are available and what type of services you're just going to run it at a different different frame of time so uh, the first things we are just going to read about is rds the relation databases right so uh, and this is the first thing so we can just going to uh, uh, study about it. So the, the RDS is basically simple and fast, and, uh, fast to deploy and scale. So we have, you know what, once you're going for the practical sort of things of uh, Amazon RDS in the AWS console, it is very simple to create. And, but the uh, matter of fact that we need to understand what is going on at the back end and what, what is what is the strength for and how can we use it effectively and what is the importance and what is the logical things are available, right? Once you're going for the you know, interview or you can just going to you know what provide some sort of information uh, in front of your management, you need to uh, you know what very careful that what is the database is all about and how, how effectively you can deploy sort of things, right? The first things are simple and fast to deploy and, and scale. So it is very, very easy and deployment and also scalable, right? AWS handles installations, patching, automatic backups and applications. So these are the sort of things is AWS managed. The installation part, you don't need to worry about it. It is automatically create an instance for you and database is also installed in, into this and the patching sort of things. So time to time, it will be patching to your systems, right? Automatic backups, it will be created, right? And also it's going to be the application sort of things, right? The third thing is compatible with the MySQL, MariaDB, Oracle, MySQL Server, or PostgreSQL databases, right? So you can it, it, the RDS is basically is compatible with the MySQL, different different MariaDB, Oracle, SQL Server, PostgreSQL databases. So you have different different options are available at the same time, right? It's compatible with all the databases. So you have just a different, you don't have, you don't have to create some different different sort of you know what SQL Server different 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 database servers so it is compatible with all sort of things so you can just create some rds and then you could then you can deploy whatever the services you you required as per company requirement right and it's a fast performance right so once you're going for the rds sort of things is automatically you know what uh, uh, deployment of your uh, your server and your patching your OS installation so it will the rds knows that what type of you know what uh, what type of configurations it will be compatible or what type of database is compatible with your uh, existing uh, databases uh, services right so fast performance will be provide no cost to get started you pay only for what you consume right 
so uh, the the thing is important here first of all you need to provide you know what um, what you can you can consume whatever you consuming in this the different different database services you have to pay, pay for it only right uh, manages automatic failure de uh, detection and recovery right so what the, another thing is important is automatic failure detection is, is available right and the recovery you can also uh, get it at the same time rds doesn't provide shell ac access to db instances and it restricts across access to certain system processes and tables that require advantage privilege so do you have you know what a uh, does it provide a cell, a cell sort of things and database instances and it is, is the restrict access to certain system procedures right and tables and require advantage privileges so different different uh, uh, privileges you can just go on to provide into this uh, in, into this rd sort of data, databases in addition to the security in the um, in your database package you can help and control who can access your rds database by using aws entry access management to define users and permissions so it is very important for your security perspective on the database part you have just create some identity uh, im users into this aws and then you can just restrict the permissions of the users and what type of command he can use it what so what sort of permissions in users can uh, use it and what type of roles we can access providing into the IEM, what type of policies you can configure into the IEM. So different different options are available for your district permissions of the users, right? You can also help protect your database by putting them in a virtual private cloud. So you have also options are available to protect your database into the virtual private cloud. Same same time. So these are the you know what some uh, some uh, important features about the RDS so you can use it. Uh, as per the requirement so oh, uh, we are just talking about some more uh, uh, sort of things into this so the automated uh, backups what what happened into this so recovery uh, recovery, recovery with point in time up to second with the, the repetition period 1 to 35 days so you can the rds is automatically take the automated backups are, are running into this so you can have the point to point in time backup right uh, up to second with the repetition period one to 35 days so any, any repeated uh, backups will be coming so right so it automatically uh, takes the backup of 35 days so it is automated backup is going on at the back end side back end of the aws rds right and the full daily snapshot with transition logs in the defined period so you don't need to have to configure it it, it is automatically taking the snapshot of your you know what transition logs in the defined period right so one to 35 days and data restoration from the most recent daily backup so it is taking the daily backup so there is no need to taking backup there is no need to take a snapshot there is no need to you know what taking some you know what backup sort of things it will be automatically you know what aws team is doing sort of things uh, at the back end okay enabled by default snapshot what about the snapshot user initiated backups right and then snapshots stored in the s3 bucket right the snapshots are stored in the S3 and uh, hence can be restored even after deletion of your RDS instance like automated backup. Okay, so suppose you you know what RDS is, is you know removed or or have some got some issues, so your your you know what uh, snapshots are available into the S3 and you can just also build up your create another RDS and then you can just use this particular uh, snapshot to, uh, to take the backup sort of things, right? The store database is a new RDS instance with a new endpoints. So you can also create some new RDS instances and then you can just use the this use this particular S3 bucket databases which you have saved it. Snapshot you can use snapshot you can use use it. So these are some important uh, prospects about the RDS, what we can do about the snapshot, about the uh, automatic backup, these these sort of things we can use it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is the third slide. So uh, we we have into this we have also uh, some important prospect is there. So the multi availability zones, right? Edges are multi edges where required. Suppose you have just created one availability zone databases your one one region, and then you have to just create, create some different you know what different regions you know what the applications going on, right? So is the need this site is down or servers this availability zone zone is not available right then you need to uh, restore your you know what and uh, database from the different different availability zones so that is why we we need to create some multi multi edges we, availability zones we need to create it so automatic replication and sync is going on so so it is automatically you know what create some different instances the different region and it automatically will be syncing failover by the AWS so whatever the failover and and 
is you know what then then by the AWS team is also help you out to you know what get the rest of your data. No need to change endpoints, so there is no need to change what change your endpoint. It is automatically created, right? In the different different region. So this is one region in the US or uh, Europe or uh, Asia Pacific region, and then there are multiple multiple availability zones that's created, right? Uh, for disaster recovery and and not to improve performance, right? So the disaster recovery and um, performance sort of things to be taken by the AWS team um, for performance and uh, improvement use uh, read replica so performance improvement you can just read the replica sort of things and what type of databases are available the mysql oracle sql server postgresql or and mariadb so the matter of fact that we can say that the snapshot sort of things and uh, uh, we have backup and restore sort of things and multi, multi availability zones um, Availability zone of your databases, so all will be taken care by, taken care by the AWS team, right? So the replicas, failover, uh, endpoints, the disaster sort of things, and that will be all all will be you know what uh, done by the AWS team. You have to just you know what uh, decide the region first of all, then you can just go for the services specific. You you can go for the RDS or different different services, and then rest of the things will be done by the AWS team. Your patching, installation, OS recovery, the applications cross region okay and uh, the, the different different databases are available same same time the performance uh, sort of things and then the, all the things will be done by the aws team uh, for your data, data database, databases part so it is very very simple you know what simpler we can say your life that uh, everything is managed by the aws and you need to decide only whether your database and what type of service you can you just gonna run it in a practical environment so uh, read replicas. So we have different different uh, replicas is available. So application service, okay, and read write connections is going on, and main databases is instances is, is created, and then it is creating the read replicas same same time, and you have you have some different different you know what uh, a synchronized application going on with the different replicas, and then it is going to then with the application servers same time. And read uh, connections only. So these are the one thing is also the read connection same time. So the read replica is basically about uh, about says that that is the different different replicas is going on and when it is then it is will be directly connected with your uh, database instances and the database instances you know what read read applications. So the traffic is coming from this application server right. Uh, that the number of users are you know what hit to the application server and the application server whatever your query queries the APIs APIs coming to your uh, AW, uh, sorry, AWS database instances. Then, as per this, basically, it is read and write connections are going on, and then it then it will be replicated to the different different in, in, uh, regions. We can say that, and the read connections going on same time, and the read replicas also. We can just um, it will it will be read by the application server same time. So it is fast connectivity. Performance is very good. The the all installations, maintenance, failover, uh, and the different multi, multi availability zones are created by the uh, AWS. So this this is sort of you know what in from uh, sort of databases managed by the AWS. So the replicas we have to just create. Uh, we have to understand some more things about it. A synchronized replication creating an ex exact copy of the database with the, which is read only. So in the synchronized replications we can say that it is the same type of you know copy, but it is a read only copy is managed by the AWS, right? So we have options available. We have to just create some, you know, what synchronized applications. We have to enable it, and then it will be creating copying of your read-only sort of things. The uh, read replica of uh, replica of replica can be created up to five copies of high-performance applications, and uh, automatic um, backups must be turned on. Deploy a replica. So we have a number of five copies we can create for high-performance applications sort of things, right? Uh, so is is there any you know what um, uh, issues has been happened your existing RDS databases we have read only copies are available for five, for five high performance applications right so there is no latency is going on same time so latency considerations so there is no latency is, is ever the same time right performance improvement for for very uh, read heavy database workloads so the performance will be improvement at the same time right. Or if your database is very high, the performance will be improvements sort of things. There's no issues with the improvement uh, performance sort of things. Supported for MySQL, My PostgreSQL, and MariaDB. So we, it is you know what the read replicas are, are supported by the MySQL, PostgreSQL, and MariaDB same time. Used for scaling, used for used for scaling and not for a DR disaster recovery unlike multi availability zones, right? 
each read replicas has its own uh, DNS and endpoint. So there is no you know, problem with you, you know, what DNS sort of things and endpoint production sort of things. Multi availability zones, read replicas can be created, right? Read replica can be converted to the, their own databases. So these are the some, you know, what read replicas important features that you can create a read only copies of your existing uh, databases and asynchronous replications going on, right? So this is the you know what it is just disaster recovery sort of things and you can just create it as per your requirement. Okay, so we are uh, we have just done about this you know what uh, RDS RDS basically uh, we have done it till now and uh, there are different uh, these replicas we have studied and the snapshot and uh, you know what uh, backup and the store and who's manages what uh, AWS who what is managed by the AWS what is managed by the um, uh, the user non prospects. Okay. So we have some secondary um, databases available. This is called a DynamoDB. Okay, so we have to study about this DynamoDB is all about. So NoSQL database, it is a NoSQL database, right? And supports uh, document and key value uh, data models and flexible data models, document and key values stored on SSD storage, right? This is another, another important perspective stored on the SSD storage sort of things. Uh, they went across three geographical geographically distinct data data centers and hence takes time to propagate because it will be you know what three geographical uh, uh, distinct can, uh, centers it will be you know what uh, pro, um, the redundancy is maintained that's why it's, it's really a little, little bit slow about it right eventual constant uh, there is default and constant within one second so it is you know what takes more than one second about that is we already discussed about the memcached or there is for application servers sort of things right strongly constant uh, reads so it is a read sort of things right dynamic uh, feed additions and push button scaling without and downtime so we can have a do push button without and time times and dynamically field additions so this is we can say that it's a NoSQL databases and it is you know what maintain uh, if, if you have a read only databases of your databases sort of things, and then you can use it my Dynamo DB and it is stored on the SSD sort of things. And high redundancy, we can say that it has three geographical states is basically is, is used used for, right? And strongly consists of reads. So if you have databases read sort of things, and then you can go for the Dynamo DB sort of prospects and the dynamic um, field addition. It is, you know what, uh, used for push button scaling sort of uh, uh, things same time okay so we we'll just move further about this so dynamo db is benefits so what we what sort of benefit we can score for it so it is a fully managed uh, databases right and it's a fast and constant performance if we can get it because it is a ssd sort of storage and we have you know what getting you know what different different geographical area area that we don't see maintained by this and uh, highly scalable same time right you can just scale up as per requirement right and it's a flexible at as per the demand as per the other you know company requirement you can just uh, enable or disable it and you can just um, and if event driven programming so you can just uh, give, do some programming sort of things into this and find grant access control so you, you just provide some different different controls over it dynamo db so these are the some uh, important benefits of dynamo db so you can uh, use it as per your requirement right so another uh, that another data data is, uh, is that shift we're just talking about so that what is that shift is doing basically so data warehouse service is in the cloud so uh, we can just data database maintenance the other two services the rds and uh, dynamo db right we can use it uh, to uh, mainly uh, databases for the uh, um, you know what uh, 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 post postgresql known postgresql sort of things and uh, what the amazon redshift is basically data warehouse sort of things we're just talking about here so data warehouse service in the cloud and cost efficient and on-demand services right and uh, all app database databases systems this is we are just talking about the rds sort of things right uh, all app is about online uh, online database application pro sort of things like right? configuration nodes and multi node and uh, leader nodes and client con connections and the service uh, queries a compute node is up, up to 128 compute nodes is, these are the, some configurations of the amazon draft ship because it is maintaining of your data warehouse in the cloud right and it's a very cost effective and on demand sort of things and uh, common your data stored sequentially has really really fast and you can store your data and really, it's really fast 
and these are some configurations requirement of your uh, Amazon Redshift sort of things, and, and massive parallel program processing. So these are some massive processing going on same same time because read and write everything is is in you not know, going on with the data data warehouse, and data encryption is transist using SSL and at the rest at using IAS to to six encryption. So your data your data you, all all your data will be encrypted same time and this is the SSL sort of things is coming to the picture at AES yes, in the two hp six encryption is there and available available in the one AZs availability zone. So you can just create some you know, one um, you know what uh, data warehouse in one availability zone same time and this is the requirement right and the cost efficient and uh, demand services. So as as per your database uses uh, the pricing part you can just take a look on the AWS page but this is the you know what Amazon Redshift is basically used for data warehouse sort of things. So you can just you know store your data in the specific particular location, and you, uh, your data will be you know what protected by the AWS um, uh, AES two hundred sixty six encryption sort of things, and uh, your your data will be you know processing very fast same time. You read and write sort of things, and you know what is the requirement some of some of the configurations right. This is some configurations also about about it, and my massive parallel processing is going on same time with your. So we can say that this is a warehouse of your uh, database, right? But uh, it, it, it's a different, it's a database sort of things. But if you have some different sort of things, Glacier and you know what, uh, the S3 buckets, these are some storage part. But it it is a, it's a, it's a database, right? It's not a storage sort of things. So it, it, database is basically you can go for you know application you're working and then application what type of, what type of app is for the API is hitting by the users in the your application sort of things and then what type of data database the querying sort of things so these are the some you know what databases are working same time right so the data warehouse so you can have you know what massive database of your company infrastructure and you can just store a specific locations like Amazon Red, Redshift. So as per the queries, suppose the user required some uh, five years back, uh, you know what queries he, he, he will provide on the application server, then it will be going to the, the Amazon Redshift and then it will provide some response at the same time, right? So that, that sort of, you know what, information will be providing same time. So database is maintained by the, uh, on the cloud of uh, is AWS Redshift. It is fully, fully secured. And the, we are just talking about elastic uh, elastic cache is all about. So I, it is basically we already discussed about it's a you know what application uh, you know what uh, uh, application um, uh, fast performance on the application server so providing the caching uh, of your uh, applications right. So what is exactly is doing? So we have to just read it. Uh, so in the memory uh, uh, cache in the cloud used to improve and performance of the web applications right. Suppose uh, uh, you are you are working in uh, Indian uh, Pacific region, and the users arguing uh, the users from the different region. Suppose the users his you know what uh, traffic is traffic is coming from the U.S. locations, or it is coming from the Europe locations, and you are hosted a web web applications on the Indian region, right? So the traffic so high traffic is going going on, then the APIs APIs are hitting, and there is a load over the application server from the different regions. So what we can going to manage it? We have to create some elastic cache sort of things. So you know what? It is providing some you know what caching uh, like your application same same time. So used to improve latency and throughput of you need heavy applications workload. So if you have heavy workload applications, so you know what it is caching your applications, right? Uh, and then it will be this morning same time. Suppose it is it is basically works on the you know what most of the times on the on online gaming, online shopping sort of things, right? So there are there are multiple you know what uh, uh, you know what APIs are coming. The different different users are you know what hitting on on your application server, and then the application server has to respond quickly as quickly as possible. Right, and uh, the memcached memory object caching systems elastic cache is protocol compliant with the memcached. So memcached is basically the object caching systems, and it is a protocol pro compliant with the memcached. And that is also is open source in memory key value store in uh, in that support data structures that are stored sets as as listed. Elastic cache supports master slave applications and available zone. So you have to just understand, memorize all sort of things that uh, what is what does done by the memcached, radish, and elastic. So what what are the key differences between uh, all three things is is very important, right? Deploy, operate, and scale popular open source available in the memory data stores. So it's open source, right? Open and deployment, operate, and scalable sort of things in the uh, open source environment also in, in memory data stores. 
build data intensive applications or improve the performance of your existing application, uh, application by retrieving data from high throughput and low latency in memory uh, memory data stores so it is you know what uh, improvement of your web applications right so once the user is accessing your application it will be in what as quickly as possible application providing uh, the api's uh, answers at the same time to the users right so this is you know what we can say that performance performance specific sort of ap applications or the features of the memory cache radiation elastic cache you can or we can use it at the same time So, what is the advantage? What if what should need to be done into this elastic cache sort of things? So, we have to understand about, about it. So, extreme performance at a cloud scale, right? So, it's extreme performance on the cloud, and if it is a fully managed sort of things, right? So, there is no need to do from your end because basically it is fully managed by the AWS. You need to just create some sort of things. Once we're going to the practical things, very easy to in what configuration maintain. Uh, uh, all sort of things but it is managed by the most of the things are managed by in the database of the uh, aws team is always easy to deploy used and monitor enhanced redis engines okay this is the redis engines are using is the ideas a uh, multi availability zones with automatic failover so it is you know configured from the aws and then you can also have some options are available so you can just enable it or disable it that's it open source compatible so you can it's used for you it is used can it will be used on open source compatible sort of things no cross availability zones data transfers cost so um, if you have just um, you know what transferring your data one uh, one end to another and into this uh, elastic cache there is no uh, there is no cost right uh, popular of gaming ed tax financial services healthcare and iot internet of things applications so i already discussed about that it is used for the gaming and online services and um, advertisement agencies and financial services healthcare sort of things so you know what because it, it is these are the some services is requirement of very quickly because if these are delays in the apis or the delays in the you know what due to the workload or the application server then you know what uh, impact the services uh, impact the business same time right so that is why we have just going for the elastic cache and we can create a different different services and then we can use it elastic cache on different different prospects okay so uh the another million dollar question is how this works okay so it is uh, maybe just talking about so uh, internet scale applications so first of all real applications and gaming and ride um, ride handling media streaming and editing and social media and need fast data processing so if you are if you are a user on on mobile or in in your laptop right lappy you can just use it to access the applications right and you require you are you are watching a movie on netflix or you are just a uh, playing uh, a you know what game online game same times okay so it is required some fast applications in, in the same time so what happened then amazon elastic cache for that is in memcached these are the, some working sort of things it is it is you know what storing your caching sort of things and then what happened in memory data store uh, blazing a fast in memory data store and use as a database cache message broker and the, the queue store in empirical data in the memory for some millions some millisecond response so you just let just like that your uh, memory is you know what caching uh all sort of you know your the your requirement right suppose you earlier uh playing a game and then it will be stored in your memory same time so once again you just open the uh, the same game same time and it will be you know stored in your uh, mem cache the same time it will respond to the same time so what happened so it is providing some uh, you know what elastic cache and that is sort of things configured and then this is the output. So uh, real-time transaction chat and the session store and um, business intelligence analytics and gaming um, uh, a lot lot boards and caches. Th those sort of things are you know what working same time. So suppose uh, the users are accessing some of them, the mem mem cache you know, sort of things are working same time, and then you can just access that have different different sort of services uh, output. Okay. So this is the input we're providing by the user same time, and the, the elastic cache is you know what providing the information like. In, uh, on the mem cache d this is what requirement and then you can just go going for the output same time it's very uh, you know what frequent frequent sort of things right so that this, so that is the use case of your you know what um uh, mm, elastic caches so this is your application server and application server 
uh, the number of users are hitting the application server and application server you know we're providing some business intelligence tools uh, right business impact sort of things and or, or the how much sales is the previous one year previous three years quarterly monthly and sort of things and then it will be stored in your cache at the same time and then what once you get information three or four times it will be stored in the cache and then it will respond same time output so another uh, uh, service is available uh, uh, AWS Aurora so AWS Aura uh, uh, AWS Aura is basically all right is basically MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible digital database engine so it is basically compatible with the MySQL and the PostgreSQL compatible digital relational database engine right and cost effective and high performance sort of things it is used for and starts with 10 GB and the scale uh, and then scales in 10 GB in, in increments through auto scaling sort of things so it is basically it is starts with a 10 GB sort of things right and it is the cost effective high performance sort of features and it is used for MySQL and PostgreSQL compatible sort of things and highly relevant two copies of data in the each available zone within in, in with the minimum of three uh, availability zones auto repair of four others replicas uh, aurora replica 15 and uh, mysql read replicas 5. so this is another in our uh, data, database in what services we can use for aws aurora so it is basically used for the mysql sort of things and postgresql sort of, SQL sort of things and compatible with the database all the engines and cost effective if your database is in our start with uh, at least 10 gb so, so that you can just use for this AWS Aurora. So that's the requirement universe. And then um, uh, scales and 10 GB increments through auto scaling sort of thing. So it will be increased up to 10 GB of your database size. So it depends on the database size. As per database size, you can just choose what type of you know database you have to go for it. So RDS is, is, is used for or MongoDB or you can uh, DynamoDB, you can use it or you can uh, AWS Aurora, you can use it. So these are the different, different use cases as per company and your corporate requirement you can just choose what what sort of things you need required and uh, this is also in what auto repairs or the others whatever the coming and replicas other other replicas 15 and mysql of your database if it is then it will be five times so amazon uh, neptune is also is uh, in what features are available in, into this aws so we're just talking about the Neptune. So the fast, reliable, fully managed graph database service that makes it easy to build and run, run applications uh, that work with highly connected databases, right? So if, if you if you have a you know what highly managed you know what graphical sort of uh, database requirement, this is your requirement, right? So you can use it Neptune, uh, Amazon Neptune. Uh, a high performance graph database engines optimized for st um, storing billions of the relationships with the querying the graph with a milliseconds latency. So, it, you know what? High performance graphs requirement uh, is require some optimized sort of things and storing billions of relationships between the different different querying to graphs. Uh, suppose um, a user is going, going to log in your data, your application servers and uh, coming from the request from the application server, then it is required some different different features on the product, right? So the different different graph is showing uh, same time with so the same in you know, what um, uh, users so you can use it for some sort of you know, high graphic um, high performance graph databases engines you can use it at the same time neptune powers graph use cases such as social networking recommendations engines and fraud detections from uh, knowledge graphs uh, drug discovery and network security where you uh, need to create the relationship between the data and quickly quickly create these relationships so if you are a network um, Social networking. Suppose uh, you are uh, working on a Facebook and uh, you have just recommendations, providing some you know what different different tagging and if you are uploading your photos. So these are the what are the relations between the one one object to the different different object same time. So if you have the, some databases of the graphics, gra graphs sort of databases should be provided by the Neptune, same, right? For example, if you are a, if you are building a social feed into your your application, so you can use Neptune to provide. Result that prioritize showing your users to list updates of their family from from friends whose updates they like and the friends who live close to them. So this is the same time as the social media, uh, you know what sort of things, and then you can upload your picture and then you know what how many number of people are like your 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 snap and 
you can just categorize your family and your friends on your close who just live in the same time so this is the relationship between the, between the different different objects same time that is why we use can you can use it as a neptune same time it is a highly available and read applicas point in time recovery continuous backup of um, to amazon s3 and uh, the applications across availability zones so it is a, a, you know what a very reliable and very flexible and highly available uh, and database we can create and it's read replicas uh, we can code in point in time recovery you can create in, in, in you know what is the zero time zero percent downtime is databases and continuous backup of study okay same time and the application across the availability zones so that that is all about because we can uh, use the different different databases same time as per the requirement suppose you could you just going for the you know what a relationship sort of object databases and graphical sort of databases and then you can go for the amazon neptune and also uh, you can uh, <clears throat> uh, you can also uh, create some uh, rds databases if you have a mosque mysql and mosque sql sort of databases okay and you require some snapshot you can some uh, you know what process in the platform sort of things then you can just choose it, uh, you know what, RDS and uh, the non relationship uh, database. You can use it for DynamoDB and sort of things, right? And um, Elastic Cache and MemKST, Radish. You can also select as per the requirement of, you know what, uh, cloud um, memory, uh, you know what, um, caching sort of things. So these are the some, you know what, data databases we have studied about, all of all sort of things. And then we tomorrow we will. Uh, I'm going to just uh, create some, you know, what practical sort of things on all, all of that, and then we can yeah, just jump into the classes. So, any questions regarding the same? So, uh, we are just going to wrap up this class. Or uh, if you have any questions, please let me know so then I will respond to you. Okay. Okay, so thank you for your time and uh, tomorrow we will go doing some practical sort of things and you can just uh, uh, check all sort of things on my YouTube channel so you will just get all the information. It's because it's, it, you know what, it's, it's not lengthy one because it's a, it's a specific focus on the topic wise. What type of databases, you know what, need to be uh, created as per your company requirement and you can just uh, decide that what type of different, different databases have different, different features, features uh, different advantages, different features are available. So you can just uh, you know what analyze as per your requirement, and then you can you can choose uh, the you know what databases, and you can also take some pricing part on the AWS online mm, you know what uh, appli applications of your AWS. You can just go for the finding the you know what pricing sort of things. Right. Thank you for your time, and then we will uh, move tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.